I'm going to demonstrate how a big data pipeline can be orchestrated with a live demo using the Universal Automation Center. So consider this business scenario. Imagine you are a manufacturing company which produces a single product in several regions of the world. The following dashboard shows you how much revenue you make in each city. For example, in Gdansk, in Poland, you made a revenue of 1,200 US dollar. In the last month, you have launched three new products. Our data pipeline should now capture any new sales data from various input sources and finally refresh the sales dashboard. The process should be event-based, meaning as soon as new sales data arrives, the processing of the new sales data should start. Let me show you the data pipeline we've created using Universal Controller web interface. Our product, the Universal Automation Center, is a software-as-a-service application running on the AWS cloud. What you see here is the data pipeline workflow which captures incoming sales data from various cloud buckets, an AWS cloud database, several AWS EC2-based Linux and Windows servers, and even a mainframe as a source. Once the data is captured, it will be ingested into a central AWS S3 data lake. When all data is available, AWS Glue will be used to normalize the data, perform some cleanup, and finally load the data to the AWS Redshift data warehouse. Once available in Redshift, we will display the new sales data in the sales dashboard and run some reports like the top five states by sales revenue against the Redshift data warehouse. The workflow will be web event triggered. As soon as new sales data is uploaded to the sales data S3 bucket, the processing will start. It is important to understand that we are not polling the S3 bucket. We have subscribed to an AWS SNS topic, which sends us an SNS notification to our webhook listener each time new sales data is uploaded to the sales data bucket. What you see in the workflow are our integration tasks. In our data pipeline, we use tasks to perform file transfers, run SQL scripts, start a glue job, run Terraform scripts, etc. We have many of those tasks and constantly developing new ones. Here you see the integration tasks I've uploaded to this controller. Additional tasks are available in our integration hub. Here you see some of the AWS integration I had imported to this universal controller. AWS Batch, AWS Glue, AWS Lambda, AWS Mainframe Modernization Task, AWS Step Functions, AWS EC2 Create Instance, AWS Start EC2 Instance, AWS SQS, and so on. Okay, let me trigger the data pipeline. I will upload the sales data to my S3 sales data bucket using my S3 Explorer. As you can see, the SNS message was received by the Universal Event Monitor and the various data transfers are triggered. In the transfer below, we stream data from a third-party public cloud bucket to the central S3 data lake. We do not need any intermediate storage for this. The solution streams multi-threaded and therefore allows extremely fast cloud transfers. In the S3 to S3 data lake transfer, I am streaming the sales data which I have uploaded from the S3 bucket sales data to the central S3 data lake. In this task, I am transferring data from an AWS cloud database and transfer the extracted data to the AWS S3 central data lake. In the above, I am transferring data from the mainframe to the central S3 data lake via a file transfer gateway located on an EC2 Linux server. For this transfer, we first check if enough space is available on the transfer gateway. If not, the workflow follows the dotted line and the Terraform workflow is launched to add a new EBS storage device to our file transfer server. As you can see, there was not enough storage available, so the Terraform workflow was executed. We set the project folder with the terraform init command, then run the terraform script using the plant command to see the result. 
if it would be as expected. And finally, run the apply command to add the EBS storage device. Here you see the plain Terraform task. It has a Terraform script assigned using our inbuilt script library. Instead of using our script library, you could also pull the Terraform script from an external repository like GitLab or GitHub. In the log file, you see that all would be fine if I ran the apply command. In my demo, I've skipped for time purpose the apply command. As you might have noticed, a Slack message has popped up to get an approval to start the AWS Glue ETL process. Before I approve, let me verify if all processes have been successfully executed. For this, I should have received an email with a report of the current data pipeline process status. Very good, I can see the mail has arrived with a report attached. In the report, you can see that all steps had been successfully executed, so I can submit the Slack message. Instead of Slack, you could also use other tools like Teams, ServiceNow, or PagerDuty. You can see the approval task was successful. Now the glue process has started, and glue will crawl the S3 data lake. While this happens, I would like to show you how you can further monitor the systems. What you see here is a real-time workflow view. You can also view the task execution in a table view. In a tree view. In a view showing the predecessor and successor task. You can see the Terraform task with the predecessor check staging sp space and the successor transfer sales data from IBM ZOS. You also have a GAN chart timeline view. Or you create your own fully customizable dashboard. Depending on your job profile, you can configure your own dashboard. In the dashboard I created for the data pipeline, various widgets showing the process, uh, the progress of the different cloud and mainframe related file transfers. Also, you can see statistical data, like the average, lowest, and highest estimated end time. In our dashboard, you can always drill up to the log file level. For example, if I click on the stream sales data S3 to S3 data lake task, you can see the task details like. This was a copy action transferring from an S3 source bucket, sales data PS1, to an S3 target bucket, SP data lake S3, folder sales data, the file we transfer is sales data.csv. As log file format, I use JSON for better post processing. The log file you can see under the output tab. Here you see the JSON format. I included also a widget for the sales data dashboard refresh with a link to the refresh dashboard. What is new in our latest release is that we collect via open telemetry metrics and traces for external monitoring application. The collected data can then be stored, example given in the Prometheus time series database, for further visualization example given in the Grafana dashboard in AWS. In the following, you see a sample dashboard which I've created setting up a Grafana dashboard in AWS. As you can see, it shows various information regarding my data pipeline, like the transfer speed over time, the file transfers per status, the SQL task per status, and we can also query the extracted data, example given, here I am tracking the revenue of the top 5 states. Let me switch back to the data pipeline. As you can see, the processing is finished. 
I will now have a look if my data finally appears on the dashboard. As you can see, the dashboard was refreshed and shows now the additional three new products.